Welcome back to Nerf Diagnostic and Repair, show where I show how to diagnose and repair various problems that might come up with your blaster. Many of these blasters were sent to me by subscribers and friends. Uh, if you'd like to have your blaster uh, featured, email me at my commission email address. First, I'll try to talk you through repairing it yourself. Uh, and if that ends up failing, then we can discuss the possibility of you sending it to me to repair. You cover shipping. And, uh, yeah. And, of course, any parts that end up being needed. Let's take a look at the first one. I was sent this Flip Fury, which has two noticeable problems. The first is it doesn't flip, which, given that that's this thing's whole gimmick, is kind of an issue. The other problem is that the cylinder does not rotate when you fire like it's supposed to. So... I suspect somebody's been in here and fouled something. I'm dead certain it's not supposed to be making that noise. So let's take a look and see if there's any hope at bringing this thing back to life. I'm willing to bet that we're going to find that this little piece of plastic that is broken off needs to not be broken off. I'm not sure where it came from, though. But I can see what the problem is. As you pull this back, it's supposed to disengage the uh, cylinder rotation mech to allow this to, fr to spin freely. But it isn't. As you can see, it, it tries to, but then it goes right back again, and that is then holding this, the rotation from happening. So I suspect this is part of the mechanism that is responsible for keeping that cylinder lock out of the way. Well, I found out where this piece went. It's supposed to go on the front of there. And I'm not sure what it's really supposed to do. I doubt it will work, but I'm just going to try gluing it for now. If it broke off before, it's probably going to be under enough stress that the super glue won't hold, but... I don't currently have a better idea. Uh, Alright, I believe I have figured it out, and uh, it was it was interesting. As far as I can tell, I believe it was a some kind of a factory flaw of sorts. This moving section right here is what disengages the cylinder so that the whole the cylinder um, assembly can rotate. And it needs to lock forward and lock it open until the rotation is complete, and then it goes back into place to lock on the new cylinder. And that is actuated when you pull the trigger, the lower trigger, the rotation trigger, and it's the, the connection right here, I don't know how well you're going to be see that, um, is engaged until it gets all the way forward, and then the thing that uh, is connected to the, the gear arm disengages and slides underneath after this is locked in place until the trigger is all the way forward, and then it disengages and that, that locks the cylinder back in place. And this part, or this part, one of them was slightly too long. And so it was causing it to disengage the cylinder de-locker before the rotation was actually complete. And so it was never actually able to rotate. Now, why that would also affect the rotation of the cylinder, I'm not sure. And I don't know that it actually does. This is the mechanism that is responsible for... Um, the rotation and it's supposed to be slightly after it fires so it fires and then it rotates and that's because the plunger has a heavier spring and slides, slams forward and then this continues forward um, after it's finished its rotation I don't know if there's supposed to be some kind of a lock it doesn't appear to be that keeps that from rotating until from going forward. Unless it's part of the, the catch assembly. Anyway. I'm hoping that's it. We're going to put it back together and see if that does in fact solve the problems. All right! It 
works. Uh, two things ended up needing to get repaired. And this is, I suspect, a factory flaw. I don't know if this stopped working at some point, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if this never did work. Because part of the mechanism that when you pull it um, locks back the uh, rotation mech that allows the cylinders to be disengaged, that was not the right length and consequently was resulting in the mechanism. Yeah. It lives! Cylinder assembly rotates, cylinders rotate after you fire. There were two things I ended up having to fix. The first was that little tab that um, engages the release lock, the part that holds back the rotation lug so that the whole barrel assembly can rotate. That was uh, not quite correct and as a result was not locking it. It was simply pulling it back a little bit and then it was snap back forward again and so it wouldn't actually ever release. And the second thing was that the actual locking lug was too long and even when it was locked in the back position it was not back far enough to actually release the cylinders. And so I have ended up filing it down and probably need to file it down even a little bit more. There we go. Um, and so even when it was locked back, it wasn't actually releasing. So I filed it down, filed that down, and now it works properly. So every once in a while you end up with a factory flaw. But the real takeaway here is don't open this blaster. This thing is a nightmare on the inside. Uh, if you want to open it up just far enough to increase your spring, go for it. Don't mess with the rest of it. There are locks in here. I'm still not sure how they work. Part of the whole, when it's um, rotated lock is that it won't let you pull the trigger and then it won't allow the the uh, cylinders to slide so while this thing was in its improperly not locked properly state um the cylinders wouldn't rotate so yeah that's interesting i always thought it was a neat blaster and i never figured that the internals were that complicated but the fact that like you can't pull the trigger while the cylinder is rotated isn't really necessary and you might be able to remove those locks but i wouldn't be surprised if you'd foul something in the process so leave it alone it's a lovely blaster for a short you know slam fire application and uh use it for that all right on to the next one after a word from our sponsor caddy wumpus i have a feeling this is going to get silly quick all right Next, we have one from the same source, which is having a similar problem, which is the cylinder doesn't rotate when it's supposed to. That's interesting. If you just pull this back, it rotates. But not, not always. So we're going to open it up and take a look, just for funsies. It's still not rotating every time on slam fire. Right, I, I got nothing. I have no idea why it will rotate every single time if you just use the top part, but quite often when you pump it, especially when you're slam firing it just won't rotate and I've looked at the internal mechanism there is no reason for it to be doing that and it it, it doesn't make any sense to me and I, I don't know what it is there is no rhyme or reason the, me the mechanism is moving that rotates it And I, I can't imagine how it's even being able to operate. Like like I said, it's, it's a mechanical part that slides forward and rotates it. And it is moving. It's just not rotating. And I don't know how that's even possible unless the nub on it is too small or there's a missing spring. Hang on. 
we're going back in. Yeah. I think there's a spring missing. Or if not, I think adding a spring will fix it. I remember seeing this problem on a specter, and specters rotate on prime. But it's still a similar mechanism of a of a piece that slides forward. So it's this part right here that moves forward. And that is what is supposed to... No, it's not going to be a spring. A spring will not fix this problem. I don't know if I could even put a spring where I was thinking I could put a spring. But it interfaces with the notches here, and that is what indexes the cylinder as you pull it. But it just isn't. is mine this took way longer than it should uh to fix uh and i i really should have started where i finished uh in the in, from the beginning um the problem was that it wasn't rotating so obviously the problem is with the rotation uh, mechanism or most likely with the rotation mechanism and i worked out fairly early that one of the issues was that the 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 nub that sticks up and inter um interfaces with the helix gear mechanism as it were the, the rotation mechanism had gotten worn down and was a little bit rounded and wasn't uh really rotating it all the time sometimes it would just slide over the top of it and not actually rotate the cylinder at all um <clears throat> i was finally able to fix it by drilling a hole through it putting a screw in there and then sanding the screw down filing the screw down until it was the height that had been worn off and needed to be replaced. I then also took some of the locks out and one of the springs, the spring that is the, the slide lock that prevents you from priming after it's already been primed, um, I ended up weakening that spring. I replaced the stock spring with one that was a little bit weaker because it was causing undue friction on that arm that slides forward uh, and preventing it from going all the way forward and completing the rotation so now it was rotating but it was only rotating part way and then it would lock the whole system up um, and finally after all of that and adding some lubrication and it now rotates every time and no problem so yeah uh really the takeaway on this one is that moving parts any part that rubs on another part that slides against another part or any moving part in general will eventually wear out. It is simply the nature of mechanical moving parts. Uh, that's why we use lubrication to, you know, keep that from happening. Um, but you can't prevent it entirely, and those sorts of parts are eventually going to wear down, and then they're not going to work properly. It's one of the advantages of flywheel blasters is that when the moving parts in those, the motors or the flywheels, uh, get worn out, they're easy to replace. We can buy replacement motors. The one part in here that is responsible for that rotation mech, I can't get another one of those without just getting another blaster. Um, so that's one of the downsides to a lot of things like revolvers and hammer shots and things like that. Um, it's hard to get replacement parts when those parts finally wear out or if they should get broken. So keep that in mind. A lot of the stuff you get from Goodwill, it's there for a reason. And sometimes it's because they've just, they've played with it and played with it and played with it and they've finally worn it out so yeah i'm glad i was actually able to get this one up and running again um i'm honestly kind of surprised there was i had given up at one point 
and then fought, no, it's got to be that rotation part, because I'd seen that in a, a, a Spectre once before. And so, yeah, went back in and was able to get it, but it definitely wasn't worth the amount of effort that I put into it. But hopefully, I don't know if they actually wanted these ones back or if they just sent them to me to tinker with. If they want them back, I'll send them back. So if you're the one who sent me these, uh, let me know, because I don't remember. All right, on to the next one after these messages. Nerf Diagnostic and Repair is sponsored by Foam Blast, who sent me this magnificent screwdriver in my colors. It's exactly the right size for pretty much every Nerf Blaster out there, and I love it. Check out their website at foamblastshop.com for all your Nerf modding needs. In keeping with weird ones, the next one I'm going to take a look at is a Vortex Blaster. And, uh, <laughs> I'm dubious. Uh, this one just does not want to fire. It primes, it loads, cannot get the trigger to release. I suspect... Somebody in the past tried pulling the trigger when it wasn't loaded, and these things have so many locks in them that they probably bent something that oughtn't be bent. And now it's not actually releasing, so... This thing is under torsion. It's under pressure. It's gonna explode. It's gonna be scary. I found it. I finally found it. Sure enough, whoever had this before didn't realize that you cannot dry fire this blaster. It won't even let you. Most Nerf blasters, you know, you can dry fire them. It's not, you know, the end of the world. But Vortex blasters are very specifically designed so that you cannot dry fire them. And somebody tried so hard, they cracked the trigger right there and so when you pull it it's not actually getting enough it's not pulling the release mechanism back far enough because the problem wasn't that you the, the locks weren't disengaging you could pull the trigger it just didn't fire And uh, I did it by taking out the trigger return spring. Now, the trigger has two return springs. There was a, a tension spring and then this compression spring behind it. And this was apparently what was causing it to no, no longer be able to get enough draw. I still think that part's not supposed to be broken. And I still think that it was broken on purpose. Probably somebody trying to fix it and doing it wrong. Um... But I'm gonna I'm gonna put a couple of spring or screws in it. Hopefully I can figure out which ones actually go where. I don't like my chances. There's one long one. And I don't know where it goes. We'll see if I can figure it out by trial and error. Alright, moment of truth. We're gonna try firing it again if I can find where those two discs went. So really, yeah. That broken trigger is never going to have it release as cleanly as it should. And I really don't know if there's anything that can be done about that short of replacing it, at which point you're going to have to take the trigger out of another one of these, in which case you should have just used that one. All right, it lives. This was a fun one. These things, take away here, these things have a lot of locks in them. And one of the locks prevents you from pulling the trigger if it is... Uh, not loaded because the internals don't play nice with being dry fired and so they put in a lot of locks to keep you from ever even being able to dry fire it and if you try to force the trigger it will break but in this case I'm still thinking it looks like it was cut I don't know the history of this blaster if someone else was in it if it just broke weird again another factory flaw didn't look like it though but um, yeah I was able to get it to work again. Don't know why it had two trigger springs. That is odd. Anyway, let's move on to the next one after a word from our sponsor. Pantaloons. See? Told you we get weird. Final one we're going to take a look at is this. This is a um, 
retaliator with a whole bunch of kit on it. Really nice, uh, the worker prophecy stuff. And it was sent to me because they felt it wasn't performing as well as they believed it should. So I took a look inside and made sure everything was installed correctly and put it all back together. And it seems to be operating. I chronoed it and it came in at uh, right around 100. Uh, some of them were uh, you know, in the, the high 80s, but I did get a few that were near 100 or over 100. And given the kit that's in here, I think that actually is um, about right. It's not a full sealed breach, uh, which I thought it was, and that and was surprised that it wasn't getting better performance. But it's it's not. It's a replacement bolt, but it is still just a regular um, bolt system. It doesn't. It's not a full sealed breach. It's not a half dark kit or anything like that. Uh, and it does have a fairly long, fairly narrow barrel, so there is some drag in there. And the spring is only, I tested it on my bow scale, it's only coming in at about six and a half, seven kilograms. So um, that really is about what you can expect from this particular setup. So if you want to get much better performance, you're going to need to go with a sealed breach of some kind so that all of the air and energy is being fully utilized. And you're going to need a heavier spring. Um, that that always felt like kind of a, a light prime to me. I thought maybe it was just the mechanical advantage, but no, you're only with only a seven kilogram spring. You're really only going to get about that much performance, even with an expanded plunger tube, which I believe this. I'm pretty sure this had. Um, so yeah, you're probably going to want a heavier spring. But other than that, it seems to be working. And I I noticed there seems to be something in the grip, and I'm I'm now terribly curious. What's going on with that? Parts. Extra screws. Okay. Neat. It has spare screws and one of the tools for operating it right there on the pump grip. So that's really cool that they give you that storage space. I like that. Anyway, that's what I have to say about this. If you are if you disagree, plus I don't even remember who sent me this, so whoever you are, let me know, and I will either tinker with it some more if you really think I need to, or I will get it shipped back. Takeaway here, some kits are better than others. Uh, full seal breech kits, half dart kits are going to get much better performance than just a, uh, a basic uh, upgraded bolt uh, and plunger tube and spring, so yeah. Uh, there are varying levels. If you're looking to get 100 FPS, which is decent for things like HVZ, um, this is a perfectly good setup. If you're going for more competitive Nerf War stuff, you're probably going to need to go a little bit uh, more all out in order to get you know, the, the 120s, 150s, 200s, whatever you're looking for. Um, but there you have it. All right. That, I think, sums it up for today. I've got a few more that I need to work on, but I've run out of time. I need food. Anyway, eh, like I said in the beginning, if you'd like to have your blaster featured, contact me at my commission email address. I'll try to walk you through repairing it, and if that doesn't work out, then we can discuss you shipping it to me. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Huh.